The NCSA Mosaic web browser was developed at the University of Illinois starting in 1992. NCSA Mosaic brought the web to Apple, PC, and Unix systems. Joseph Harden managed the software development group at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications. NCSA was kind of a special place, right? Um, one of those things that happens very infrequently where there's lots of energy, a uh, large amount of resources, visionary leadership, and a lot of free space for people to play. Um, and Larry Smarr has to figure in any discussion of it quickly because he's the person that created that space. And <clears throat> that gave a bunch of us, people in visualization, people in uh, computational science, people in collaboration technologies, people in um, all kinds of stuff, networking, in the late middle and late 80s, uh, a space to just figure out what it was that we thought was fun and what was interesting. And what I thought was interesting was how people were using these new technologies to work together. We'd been working, um, we started out working with uh, tools that s supported simulation and computations on the main supercomputing systems. Uh, that's what the software development group did. And there was a group before I joined it that did NCSA Telnet. Right? This is back when we were trying to convince the physicists that DECnet wasn't such a great idea, that we wanted this crazy, open, nobody owns it, right, IP um, model for the network. And that was kind of a, a, a bit of a struggle um, because if it was an open source type thing and nobody owns it, why, how's anybody going to have responsibility for it? And why not use DECnet, which is this perfectly good proprietary, well-developed, you know, uh, system, yada yada. So it was a long time. It took a while for us to explain to the physicists why we wanted an open model for um, TCP IP for the interconnection or, uh, of all these networks. And I spent time for a while with a program at NCSA called the Affiliates Program, where we gave people Mac SEs and told them about TCP and put the NCSA telnet on the machine and said, now here's how you get to the supercomputers. Larry recognized from the beginning, and we all loved the idea, um, that these small little things on the desktop were really the gateways for everybody to the big machines in the background. And that all of this would turn into one cloud behind the, the, the screen that we needed to figure out how to get the user involved in as much as possible. So we were interested in building tools for end users that worked with PCs and that allowed them to do their work better um, in the computational science communities that they were part of on the supercomputers. And it's an easy extension from that to think about collaborative technologies in the large. How do people work together not only with these tools but also with um, simple communications, um, email, papers, data sets that they want to share, and how do they do that? Initially, our interest was in synchronous tools um, when we were thinking of collaboration tools. So we were building something called NCSA Collage, which was a set of tools that worked. And one of the big deals was that they worked across the three platforms. Um, the X Windows for the Unix people, uh, the Windows environment, and the Mac. And that was one of the things that was sort of part of the underlying culture there, was that we wanted to make them available to as large a community as possible. So we started working on collaborative tools, and there was a set of people in each of the, on each of those machines that was working to make it possible for people to share in real time images of their data, the uh, spreadsheets of their data, and um, papers that they had uh, run across interesting references to uh, with their colleagues who were remote from them geographically. So that's the context in which Dave Thompson, who was one of the developers, one of the X-Windows developers, the lead X-Windows developer, I think, for the collage tool, um, pulled down one of the early um, web browsers. And I, it was the one from Slack, and I can't remember its name. Um, and he went through the effort of 
getting it working and brought it in and showed it to Mark Andreessen and I. And both of us looked at the screen. Dave described what he had in front of us. Um, and we said, we can do better than that. That's a complicated system and the interface looks terrible. And it, Dave said that it was a real pain for, it to, for him to get it working, for him to download it and install it and compile it and everything. And it only works on the next Windows box. And wouldn't it be cool if it worked across all three of the boxes and if it was something that was just a plug and go like the rest of our tools. So Mark and another developer there ran with the idea. Dave wanted to work on it, but I said, Dave, please finish up with the collage stuff. And this was before we really understood what was meant by open source. So we just, and, but we wanted everybody to be able to take the software and do whatever they wanted to with it. We weren't that concerned with commercial advantage. We were more interested in it being open and uh, people being able to make contributions back to the code and taking the code and doing what they wanted to with it. So we just put it all in the public domain, which as the folks from Apache will tell you, uh, was kind of ambiguous. It's not clear what that means. Um, but at least it got the code out there. Uh, so, Mark and Eric were working on that. Um, working on what? Mark and Eric were working on what? The first generation of uh, NCSA Mosaic. And this was an X-Windows uh, app. And nobody was working yet on the Windows or the Mac version. And we saw the first version of that come out when was it, early 93, late 92, and um, it was probably early 93, and the response, of course, was fantastic. It's wonderful to be able to just click on something and see it right away, and indeed, the combination of um, hyperlinks in a document as far as navigation and retrieval of documents as a user interface is just great and a lot of people um, got it immediately, especially people that were working with um, the tools at NCSA and the companies. I remember an HP exec coming in one time and uh, Mark and Eric had written a little filter that took Unix um, uh, documentation and made it into HTML and made all of the references into links and they went to, they hit an HP site uh, and the exec said, where's this coming from? Because he was able to see all of his HP documentation there in the room at NCSA and navigate through it real easily. And he said, well, you've got three or four folks back there that have put up uh, HTTPD servers. You may not know what those are yet. And he said, I've never heard of this. And we said, but this is the kind of thing that um, is probably going to be really useful in the future for people who are trying to manage documentation in a distributed fashion yada, 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 right? We went on with the story like that, and this guy was bouncing up and down in his seat. And this was the kind of response that we got with it. Um, and for a while, we tried to integrate the earlier work with Collage with the work with Mosaic, and early versions of Mosaic have a Collaborate button at the top. And that was something that would allow you to pull in something from a synchronous session. Uh, and the idea was that you'd be working with your colleagues synchronously, and then asynchronously go off and use the browser and pull something into the, uh, the collage session or vice versa be working on something in the collage session and be able to access it through the browser or just use the browser as a component in the, in the session. Well, um, the browser of course took off. We had uh, Tom Redman who was the lead for the um, Mac version, though uh, he was the person who really built it was Alex Todek, who was a, a excellent developer and a lot of times ran ahead of the other people that were working on stuff, especially on the Mac. Um, and Chris Wilson and John, they were working on the Windows version. So all of a sudden, in '93, late '93, early '94, there's this full suite of mosaics that work across the X Windows, the Mac, and the Windows system. And that's the point at which um, the guy who was the president at the time of the Internet um, Association said NCSA has fired a shot heard around the world because it's available now across all these platforms and 
anybody can use it. We were convinced deep down inside that all of the new technologies and the digitalization of the world and everything was going to make a huge difference. We just weren't sure exactly how. At the same time, when people would come to us early on in the Mosaic experience and say, we want to commercialize this uh, and do this with it or do that with it, there was a lot of, you know, we're not sure. I remember sitting in rooms with um, commercial folks that came in and pitched to us, um, and I'd bring the whole team in, um, the whole software development group, and say, listen to these guys, and, you know, tell me what you think about this. Um, and we were, nobody was sure what it was going to do. And there were people who uh, started off uh, building browsers and just kind of never got off the ground. It wasn't until um, the Netscape effort started up uh, that there was sufficient energy and sufficient resources, I think, to really get on and ride and push um, and, and, you know, crank up a group of X hundred developers uh, in a matter of months. And then they were, you know, quickly overshadowed by the effort that um, Microsoft put into it. I remember one of the Netscape guys saying, um, I came back from a meeting with some folks up in Seattle and they said that Microsoft now had, this is when Netscape was writing at the top of its form, right? Top of the game. This guy says, Microsoft just told me that there's this, somebody from Microsoft just said that they've got like 2,000 developers working on this. Said at that point I realized that we were, you know, going to have some difficulties. Um, and we, of course, always felt that there should be more than one browser. Um, and so we wanted to, because we were interested in standards and openness, right, at the time. If one, there's only one browser, then that company gets to determine what the standards are. And there were all kinds of hassles early on about um, putting in different features and the browsers driving the standards rather than the standards driving the browsers and all this kind of stuff. So we wanted some diversity. There was a feeling very early on uh, that this was going to be a real gas. This was going to be hot. That this was something that was, the response was just so immediate. If you go back and you ask people um, who were sitting in front of machines in 19... 93, 94, 95, right? Uh, and you say, do you remember the first time that you used Mosaic? Right? Or do you remember the first time you used a browser if it wasn't Mosaic? And the vast majority of them that, I, that I've run into say, yeah, I can remember. And I remember one of the NSF program officers calling me up one day, just out of the blue, and saying, I just wanted to tell you, you know, you guys, probably, this was like after we'd been playing with this for months, right? Not, not years, just months. He said, you know, sometimes we just sit around and click on things because it's still such a surprise to have a picture or a whole other page of information pop up, right? And we don't know where it's coming from and we don't know who's putting it up, but we still haven't gotten over the gee whiz aspect of this yet.